Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for March 22nd, 2021. So I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend, a good restful weekend, and you're ready to kick off this week. We have an interesting week this week with Jerome Powell speaking three times this week and a virtual parade of Fed speak out there um, on the economic calendar. And we also have Europe going back into lockdown due to um, their third wave of coronavirus, um, kind of dampening the spirits of a spring recovery over there. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle in, and let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So as we kick off Monday, we have some things to just really, um, well, could weigh on the market. But we also have a market that is exceedingly bullish and um, just refuses to see much of any downside in this economy. Let's take a look at the technicals of the chart. And although we had a little bit of selling into the close on Friday, overall we can see the trend remains very bullish here in the Dow. Now I had warned several times of that possibility of how painful a pullback might be. And we've kind of experienced a, a little bit of that here recently with a little bit of back and forth. We still have the concern of this uh, shooting star top up here that did follow through to the downside. And then we tried to, to get out from under that on Friday, but those sellers came back in at the close particularly and really pushed us back down now keep in mind that we have some support in here that could hold us pretty easily and we have support right through here that could hold us pretty easily and if we were to pull back that would still be a relatively um painful pullback let's take a look i'll measure this from the dow itself and you can see if we look right in here and pull back into this area right here, you can see that's 715 points from where we closed on Friday. And if we were to actually pull all the way back down into here, that's 1,050 points um, to that level. So that would be a rather painful pullback, but I'm not sure we're going to get that. We'll just wanna just really stay on our toes and watch that pretty carefully, just in case those sellers decide to push on through with <clears throat> that lockdown in Europe may be a, creating some worries about overall economy. So watch that closely, but we're in pretty good shape here on the Dow. Now, if we take a look at the SPY, there is just a tiny little bit more for concern here in the SPY. Notice that we pushed down here on Friday and we have actually, depending on here, let me make sure that's a nice straight line. Um, we broke that price support in the chart. And breaking that price support does add a little bit of concern in um, the market. Notice that depending on how you draw a trend in here, we have also kind of given up that trend just slightly, but I won't, don't think I'd be overly worried about that. Keep a close eye on this as we rally back up. We'll want to consider the price resistance in the chart. And remember, if we were to actually get a failure in this area, that's where some technical damage could really be created in the SPY. So watch that closely here today. Right now, we have futures trying to push this back up. We've got those bond yields coming down just a little tiny bit. So we're getting a, a bit of inspiration in here, but we're really going to have to watch that closely. And then if we take a look at our NASDAQ, this is still where the problem remains. <clears throat> NASDAQ continues to struggle and um, well we have some interesting patterns here that could be bullish or bearish first off let's start with the bullish you can see we have the possibility that we have filled out or drawn an inverted head and shoulders pattern on this short term we've also come out from underneath that little downtrend and we're trying to hold it as price support right here in this area now with those 
10-year bonds starting to diminish a little bit, we could get another challenge for the part of this chart that is still rather bearish. And that is the fact that we have a flattening 50-day moving average. We have our shorter term averages that have crossed down through the 50. And we, if we rally back, we will still be challenged by that price resistance in the chart okay and that 50-day moving average so the question will be if those bonds are pulling back can we get some recovery here in the nasdaq and will it be enough to actually get us back above that 50-day moving average that's a big question that we're going to have to answer and perhaps we'll get that answer this week as um, futures in the in the nasdaq are trying to push higher this morning so we'll want to keep a close eye on that then let's take a look at IWM. Now IWM <clears throat> suffered pretty much the same um, pullback that we saw in the SPY that we broke, just barely broke that level of price support in the chart. But overall, not so bad here. Now, clearly our trend, depending on how you draw that, we may have kind of given up that trend for the short term. And we've seen oil sector stocks and financial sector stocks softening just a little tiny bit, mostly oil. But um, as long as those continue to hold up, I think we're going to do pretty good here in IWM. So watch that closely. Once again, the problem is going to be if we rally up into these resistance levels and then show any kind of a failure. That's where the problem will really begin. So far, I think there's probably a pretty good case to say the bulls are still in control in the Diamond Spy and Q. IWM, or uh, Diamond Spy and IWM and QQQ continues to be just that uh, problem child that we're going to have to keep a pretty close eye on. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now the VIX, doggone it, we, we started a pretty good trend there where we broke um, some support level in the chart. We broke this price support as fear started to drive, drive um, or pull out of the market, I should say. And then all of a sudden we had that selling wave that came in that really perked up that fear. Now what's going to be important here is if we're going to get bullish, we need to see this fail and come right back down. Last thing we want to see is this holding we pop back up holding this support and then seeing another surge higher in fear we'll want to watch that pretty closely we're on the cusp of maybe breaking this market um, or breaking this vix to the downside and we really should be well down into here creating these new record highs not floating around up here which makes it for some very challenging price action particularly in options as the market makers continue to spread those bid ass and um, they're pretty darn expensive so watch that close then let's take a look at our t2122 now t2122 has never been and will never be an indicator that tells us which direction we're going to go but what it does do is it signals when we've reached an overbought or oversold condition and as you can see we have been signaling up here for a while we were signaling that overbought condition we did get that pullback in the market and unfortunately we don't have any clues here this morning you can see we're kind of right down here in the mid-range which means that we have about an equal opportunity for upside or downside in that chart i think i'm going to have to favor the bulls on this though um, the bulls are trying really really hard but there is that complication with the European shutdown. And if we see some selling um, over there coming into play, it could weigh heavily on our market as well. So watch that closely. Just, just know that we could flip both directions here in the market today. And then if we take a look at T2101, T2101, we're up here challenging this downtrend in that market breadth. And it's going to be an interesting thing to see if, if we have enough energy um, on that bullish side to um, extend us up through that area. Watch that close, whether or not we'll get a wide enough base of bullishness to push us through. That'll be an interesting thing to keep a close eye on um, as we progress throughout the week. And then let's take a look at um, these bonds. Um, 
The 10-year Treasury, I think, is something we're going to want to keep an eye on. The 10-year Treasury um, soften, has softened just a little bit, but keep a close eye on that. There is um, someone in the, in the news today saying it's likely going to soften just a little bit, but it's not going to stay that way. Um, and expecting a major surge in those bond prices heading into the last half of this year. Whether they're right or not, I don't know, but we'll want, definitely want to be keeping an eye on that as inflation worries continue to particularly hurt that tech sector. So watch those close. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar does have a few things that we'll want to be paying attention to as we move forward. Um, interestingly enough, we have Jerome Powell speaking three times this week. He's going to be in here this morning at about 9, noon tomorrow, and then 10 a.m. on Wednesday. And if you note through the calendar, we just have a parade of Fed speak going on this entire week. I, I doubt we learned anything more, but it's just we're chock full of Fed speakers. Um, so we'll want to kind of keep an eye on that. Also keep in, in mind that we have some big economic reports this week. We've got existing home sales. We know that home sales have been struggling just a little bit in their pullback because of the high price of lumber. Um, um, property prices um, surging, things like that. We'll want to keep an eye on that. We've got new home sales. So we've got a lot of home data uh, the first part of this week that we'll want to pay attention to. And then those durable goods orders, PMI. We've got GDP and jobless claims on Thursday and international trade and incomes and outlays on Friday. So we have a pretty good amount of economic data to deal with. Um, this week. On the earnings calendar, it's going to be a lighter week on the earnings calendar. We're starting to diminish um, just a little bit. And what's interesting is we have a lot of, um, we have about 60 companies on the calendar today, but there's only about 13 of those companies that have even verified their reports. They're uh, largely very, very small cap type companies. Let's take a look. Um, NEWT is one of those stocks that we might want to pay attention to today. They will be reporting and you can see they've been in a very, very strong upside move. The last couple of days experienced some selling, but we'll want to watch that pretty closely today on that report if you have an interest in that stock. Um, SNX might be a notable today. Notice that we've been in a very nice bullish upside move. Broke through this level up here broke through and we're holding it as support. So we we'll might want to keep an eye on that. And then if we look at TME, TME is about the only one that I could come up with for notables today. TME breaking through some resistance here, um, heading into its earnings report. This would be a great chart to watch carefully if it can rest and pull back, find that opportunity um, into, that, um, into that trade. So nice looking chart. So how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos on YouTube, please click that subscribe button and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And then if you feel that the video was worthy, if it helped you um, in your preparation for the day, please click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. And also feel free to share this video out there on any of your social media. That helps the channel continue to grow. And I just want to say thank you so much for doing that. And I also want to give a big shout out to those folks who have been supporting the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. If you look right below the title of the video, you'll see a link down there for Buy Me A Coffee. I want to say thank you to everyone. That's just, um, I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys humbled me every day. Um, and um, I never would have guessed ever that there'd have been this much interest in this kind of content. Um, so I truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let's take a look <clears throat> at some of these stocks setting up. Now, we've got bullish stocks, we've got bearish stocks, and we've got a kind of a mix. It's going to be a really, um, looking at these trades, it's going to really require that stock picker's eye 
to decide and determine which one of these might be, or any of them, whether they'll be uh, good trades or not. You guys know that I've been keeping a pretty close eye here on Disney. I like this chart and I wanna see this hold in here. Now we've kind of slipped a little bit past our trend. <clears throat> We may need just a little bit more bullishness to get this going in here, but I'm gonna be keeping an eye on Disney. I think it's still a pretty good looking chart and have some interest in that trade. Let's take a look at Pfizer. Now this is a completely different looking chart. Notice that in Pfizer, we're breaking this downtrend and we are holding, here's our 50 day is the blue line, The pink line there is the 200 day and I do have a 500 day moving average on there that's kind of serving as a cap right now on Pfizer but notice our short-term averages are all coming up we're building a nice little level in here of moving averages that could be that kind of uh, moving average squeeze pattern in a chart and I love the fact that we've rallied and now we're resting here so watch this chart I think there may be that opportunity that this could pop on through and I actually place an alert right here on that chart now we do have to respect the fact that we do have price resistance in the chart not that far away but watch that closely if we can gain some energy in here and start perking up notice that Pfizer's just been really beat down here recently and if we can get up through that resistance level in the chart um, Pfizer may start coming back around so keep an eye on that um, as you guys know I've been holding and continue to hold so I have a bias in here um, KHC and I think KHC continues to develop out pretty well um, pushing up nicely here resting a little bit in that price action but holding on to this overall trend we're seeing a lot of these packaged foods um, consumer defensive stocks, um, high dividend payers do very, very well here over the last few weeks. So watch that closely. KHC starting to look pretty decent um, overall. Keep a close eye on it. I have also been keeping a pretty close eye on uh, Valero and Rig. Now Valero has had an ugly little pullback here in the last few days. We saw that oil sector kind of softening a little bit and refining took a bit of a hit. So this one may actually have to come off the list. We'll want to watch that close. But keep an eye on Rig. Now Rig also has pulled back pretty much, um, pretty strong, and a lot more than I would have liked to have seen. And unfortunately, I continue to hold this stock. I'm looking to see if we can catch a little bit of bullishness in here over the next few days and perk that back up. I personally believe oil stocks have no place to go but higher uh, because of um, the potential for US recovery and because um, OPEC is working really, really hard to try and keep those prices high. So watch that closely. I also think it would be a good idea to keep an eye on AT&T. Now you guys have heard me talk about this a few times, but AT&T hanging in here, it does have a resistance level in the chart. And one of the things that interests me is this great big dividend uh, that AT&T pays. Now I do know that they're trying to sell their Viacom unit and it would be great if they did that um, that would help the company a lot but watch this close breaking that downtrend holding this area for support pretty choppy in here um, no doubt about it but I want to watch for that opportunity if this can kind of start to perk up so keep a close eye on that you know you pretty much can't go wrong if you take a look at some of these a little retail stocks um, like KSS um, KSS beautiful chart and you can see this has just been one of those charts that's really easy to read really easy to make some money on um, it doesn't have a lot of volatility in it and it's just chugging right on up um, this trend KSS looking pretty good another one I like is UAA now I personally am holding UAA so once again um, watch out for that bias that I may have but UAA has been working very very nicely just continuing to push on up hasn't been majorly volatile and I like that in charts I like that consistency and notice that we broke through this really significant level of price resistance here in the chart and we're trying to hold that so UAA still 
continuing to try to move higher in these uh, this chart. Um, you know, there are quite a few of these um, retailers um, that are doing very well. Take a look at Macy's. Now, Macy's has had a nice little resting pullback here recently and may have to pull on back or consolidate a little bit more to move out here to this trend. But we might want to keep an eye on that for that upside move in the chart. So there's a few stocks for you to take a look at. Now, there are a lot of others out there um, setting up really good patterns. Um, this is probably going to be a good stock picker's time because I think there is that chance the overall market could just kind of consolidate. And if the, if the market is consolidating, we'll have to be on our toes um, as stock pickers to pick out those good charts. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great success in your trading. And I want to say thank you once again to everyone who supports the channel. You guys are awesome. Uh, truly, truly appreciate it. Everyone, take care. Have a great one. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning.